there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Today I am working on a layout for the Telephone Hop, and um, I am on the Scrappy Shenanigans team, and if you watched the video right before mine, this is from Brianna, and this is uh, the layout that she did. And so I haven't seen anything other than this layout, I didn't see anybody before her, and I won't see anybody after her until all of the videos go live. But um, this is my inspiration piece right here, and I'm going to scrap lift it. And so I went through and I picked out two photos, these are of my grandson, and um, actually that's my grandson and my son and um, my grandson and he is, is sitting in the driver's seat of my son's big Jeep and um, he looks like he's really like trying to figure out how to drive that car but um, in Brianna's um, layout her photos are black and white and um, I did go through and make mine black and white and then I just um, added the color back to my grandson and my son in this photo I didn't do my son over here because he's kind of like um, he's kind of like behind him a little bit and uh, the reason I went ahead and did black and white um, for the background is because the original photos has a lot of green in it um, my son had kayaks on top of his Jeep and so there's the green kayaks with the blue interior there's green over here and yellow over here and um, I toyed with making the whole thing black and white but I, then I decided I wanted to just have that special focus on the two of them I don't have a lot of photos of the two of them together um, like this so I wanted to go ahead and get this documented so that is why I did that um, and then uh, before I went on camera I went ahead and pulled some branding strips and these are the branding strips I'm gonna use uh, mostly red black black and white and gray I did throw like this teal color in there just for a little bit of added interest and I'm using a white paper hers is not a white paper it is a super light pink and it has these numbers on the side I don't know if you can see that um, they're super light, it says 05, 04, and then there's lines. Um, so I, I know I want to put something in this background here, but I don't know what, and I didn't want to use something that's really dark, and I don't have anything that, I couldn't find something that I felt worked for this layout. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use a stamp, and it's this stamp right here, and I'm going to stamp it all up, up and down the sides. Um, but I'm just going to go over it with clear embossing. So there's visual interest and texture, but it's not going to have color added to it. So I am going to go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we will see what happens. <laughs> so I'm starting out with this Fisker stamp and a Versamark ink pad. And I am stamping on top of a firm mouse pad just so I get a really good impression. And I'm just using my clear embossing powder. And I'm not going to go through all of that on film, like you, you'll see it here, but I'm not showing you the entire process on the other side of the layout because it's the same. So I did an entire swatch down the right and the left hand side of the layout. And um, sometimes I was using my heat gun off camera because I started blowing the embossing powder everywhere. So uh, that's why I'm not showing you everything because I cut part of it out I had to stop and clean up everything because um, I had that fine white powder everywhere so um, I highly recommend that you don't use your heat gun <laughs> with your powder your embossing powder exposed um, also my desk is not the best desk for stamping on because I have a glass mat but it is raised and there's a little bit of a give to it so it doesn't always leave the best impression so that's another reason I use that uh, mouse pad underneath now I've cut these branding strips or strips of paper that I think I'm going to use and um, I am I am in fact going to use them this one I had to go back and trim it off because it was cut a little bit wide and it left a little bit of the additional color from the paper um, that it was on and so I wanted to go ahead and pull that off so it didn't have that on there and then I decided I was going to rough up all of the edges of these strips of paper and Brianna has that in her uh, layout as well hers are kind of like roughed up and um, not perfect and I really like that and hers are actually not even all the same width, width from what I could tell um, mine are the same width all the way across which is fine uh, you know when you scrap lift something it doesn't have to be exact and uh, a lot of times, you know, you just use it as a jumping off point so that you can get an idea of what you want to do. Now, I am kind of scrap lifting it fairly close to what it is because 
that's kind of the impression I get from a telephone hop. Um, I was always one of those kids at camp when we played that game. I tried to repeat exactly the same thing um, as the person told me before me, but there were a lot of people that would intentionally mix it up, and um, that's just not me. I tend to be a rule follower, so, um, so I'm sticking pretty close to what she's got on her layout. Uh, even as far as the photos are, you know, somewhat black and white, at least the background of them is black and white, like her photos. Now, of course, if I didn't have that green and blue in there, I probably would not have necessarily turned them black and white, but, um, you know, for this particular case, I wanted to, and I thought it was kind of fun. I, I've done that recently with a couple of photos on my layouts where I just have one part of it being colored and I really like the way that it looks. Um, it just gives some additional interest and there is a an app that you can use to do that on your phone and it is called, let's see here, it is called Photo Splash and that's the one that I use. So if you're interested in doing that, check out the app called Photo Splash. It's pretty simple and easy to use. You can maximize, you know, the photo, make it really big, and um, so it makes it easier to trace around the area with your fingertip uh, that you want to have colored. So that works out. Now I went ahead and laid these out in the order that I want them in, and then um, I am going to glue them with my liquid adhesive, and I'm just using the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. And the reason that I'm using that is because I'm going to actually stitch these down. And uh, with the liquid adhesive, once it dries, it's not going to stick on my needle like it would if it was the ATG gun. So right now I'm also lining up my center strip so that it is at the 6 inch mark. And I do like things to be pretty straight on my layouts. There are times when I intentionally have them a little bit wonky, but... Um, I'm not going to measure all of these strips. I just wanted to measure that first one. So once I have the first one down, I know that I'm building out the same uh, on both sides of that first strip. And in theory, it should be <laughs> lined up straight or somewhat straight. So I just didn't want to start out with a, a strip that was cockeyed or over to one side or the other because once I got done with putting these strips down, it would be more obvious than, um, you know, than if it was lined up. So that's why I measure. And I, I do use my T-square ruler a lot in my layouts, and I it's one of my most used tools, um, and my centering ruler as well, just so that I can make sure that I get things where I want them. Now, I'm not so type A that I'm going to, like, rip my layout apart if it's not perfectly straight. In this particular case, if I was a little bit right or a little bit left, I probably would have just trimmed off a little bit on one edge, the edge that had more of the white space on it, and then I would have backed the entire layout onto, you know, black cardstock or something like that. So off camera, I went ahead and stitched, and you can see those stitching lines. Um, I used some red thread, and I like how the red looks on top of the black and white, and I also like how it looks on top of that teal turquoisey color um, down the middle. And then I'm ruffling up all of the edges to give a lot of dimension. And uh, Brianna's looked like it had some dimension as well, so uh, it looked like they were, you know, ruffled up a bit. So I went ahead and took that from her layout as well. And I like the look, it gives a lot of added texture. And because this layout is somewhat simple, um, there, there's a lot going into it when you, when I'm actually making the layout, but it has a very simple feel and look because it has a lot of white space on it. Um, so I did want that added texture. And then between that and the added texture of the embossing, um, it just gives the layout like a really finished look in my opinion, and um, these are not things that you de would necessarily have to do to create this layout, and your layout would look fine if you didn't, um, but I like to sometimes just take it up a notch, so 
if you're looking to take your layouts up a notch, do all those little tiny extra details, and um, and you'll you'll find that they have more interest to them when you do that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, ruffling up the edges or distressing the edges of the paper. It could be it could be anything. It could be you know extra mist. It could be extra little details of um, extra die cuts that you slid in there or um, the confetti pieces, maybe you put in some extra enamel dots or something like that, but um, or extra stitching. So any of those little added extras that are not a requirement for a layout, not that there's any requirement for a layout, but um, you know what I mean, you pretty much can start with paper photos, journaling, and be done, but any of those added extra things that you add to th your layout is going to just step it up even more. Um, now I'm using this black punch that has a scallop edge to create these little, um, they're not tabs, but just what would be like a little ruffled border on the two outer edges of the photo. And uh, her layout had something like that as well. So I'm going to use that and then I'm going to use these word stickers from Tim Holtz. And um, the one on the right hand side is going to say stay curious and the one on the left hand side says adventure awaits you and I thought those were perfect for this because he's a really curious guy he really just he's super smart and um, I know that sounds like I'm biased but he really is super smart he's got more than 150 words in his little vocabulary for being not even two yet um, and he really does understand and try and figure out things but uh, and I think that's what he was actually doing, sitting in this Jeep. He's looking around like, wow, this is what the view is from up here. Are there other cars? And he's just really checking it out. He's very curious. And uh, his, his mama was like that when she was just a little thing, too. And so um, they got to know what's going on. And so I thought that was perfect. And then I went ahead and sprinkled some mist over this. I used some Heidi Swap in blue. And I used... Uh, some Nouveau Shimmer Mist, I believe is what it's called, and uh, that's in like a teal color, and then I use some Dilutions in black, and it's their Glimmer, their, it's not Glimmer, it's Sparkle Mist, or I don't know, it's the one that has the silvery sparkles in it. <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's the Dilutions with the Sparkle. And then I went through my Vicki Booten sticker book, and I think that might be an Amy Tangerine one on the right-hand side, or Dear Lizzie, I'm not sure. It's one of the two of them. And I pulled some stickers from both of those, and I'm looking basically for anything in the teals and reds. And I pull out one that says, Like a Boss. I pull out a little red one that says, Love It. Um, another teal one that says, Wonderful. And then I have some die cuts that are from the Chamel collection. Um, it's from her latest Never Grow Up. One says Play and one says Curious and I will use those on the layout. And then some of the stickers that are from that sticker book I had to go ahead and back them on white because they are clear stickers and uh, with all of the uh, colors from all of those strips of paper in the background I wanted to make sure that you could still read the stickers that I was putting on there. Now I am uh, stapling this little sticker. This is just a little journaling spot and I'm going to put the date in there and leave the rest blank for his mom to write something on there and she does a lot of the journaling that is in his book um, I, so I leave space for her to write and then I will write my own little note as well in there and this little chipboard piece that is above him on the right hand side says you are amazing and I think Brianna's layout had something like that on her, one of hers as well. It has like a little banner piece stick, sticking on the photo. <laughs> and then um, I pulled that camera from one of the Chamel collections. And I'm really liking how this is coming together. I've got this title. Uh, I pulled some foam stickers that said, or foam thickers that say forever. And so my title I think is going to be Forever Curious. And I'm using a ton of adhesive to put these on, and I don't normally use this much adhesive on my layouts for just holding down the photos. But because it has all of that ruffled up paper, I wanted to make sure that it really 
grabbed hold and held on there for for the long haul. I don't want it to be in my album and have the photos fall off of the page or, page or anything like that. So um, with all the extra dimension, I thought that would be the wise thing to do. And then I like this little sticker that says wonderful. I do end up sticking that onto some white cardstock as well because that is another clear sticker. And um, actually, I don't think it's a it's not a clear sticker. It's a really thin sticker. Uh, some of those sticker books have some stickers in them that are kind of like almost like a washi, but or or thinner than a washi. And uh, again, with all of that dimension underneath it, I wanted it needed something that was more sturdy underneath it. So I backed it onto some white cardstock just so that it would hold really well and not. Um, be rippled with the paper underneath it. And then this little piece that I'm adding on at the bottom is where I am going to write a little note. And basically my note is um, what I said at the very beginning. It says, hanging out in Uncle Josh's big Jeep, you look like you're actually going to drive. And um, so that's my little note. And then there will be a spot, the other spot for his mom to write something. Um, I wasn't actually there on this day, so I don't really know what was going on or what the situation was, and so uh, she might want to document something to that effect. And this one is the one that says, Like a Boss, and that one was a, a clear sticker, um, and so it definitely needed to be backed. And I just thought that was super cute because... Uh, he looks like he is in charge. <laughs> At least he thinks he's in charge. And it's really funny. He does think he's in charge. Anytime he comes over um, or, you know, we're together, he basically tells everybody what he wants them to do. He'll say, he'll say, Pa, sit. Pa, come. Graham, come. Graham, sit. Graham, read. <laughs> you know, it's really super cute because he tells you exactly what he wants. And, um, and he's not shy about it, so. And that little piece says, love it. And I added some staples to it. They're not actually stapled to the layout. Um, my stapler ran out of staples at that point, so that's uh, why I went off camera and had to fill the stapler. So I added also to the bottom right-hand side some staples to that little red one, just to give some additional interest and the little tab that says you are amazing is also stapled on. Um, the two that are on the diagonal are not stapled to the paper because my stapler doesn't reach that far and I didn't really want to mess with opening it up and and there is a way to do it but I didn't want to mess with it so I figured I'll just throw the staples in there and adhere it down. So Then I pulled out some enamel dots and I threw three enamel dots in the upper right and in the upper the lower left uh, just to give a little more interest and a little more pizzazz and that's pretty much going to do it. Um, so for the telephone hop this is the Scrappy Shenanan Shenanigans group and I uh, look tomorrow to see who is next. That should be Katie Scott over at Scrappy Sisters and yesterday's would be Brianna Nicole and you can see how everything's uh, progressing. Thanks so much for watching. Stick around for the close-ups. They're coming up.